that he got rid of the pipeline. Get rid of the pipeline. Get rid of our energy. Start this downfall. Because we need energy for everything. Do y'all know that? And they were talking about the Green New Deal. You know, climate change. I'm going to help y'all with that real quickly. And I'm going to do it in the Wrightsville way. So you can understand what I'm saying. <laughs> we, in America, have some of the cleanest air and cleanest water of anybody in the world. Yes, right. So what we do is we're going to put from the Green New Deal millions or billions of dollars cleaning our good air up. So all of a sudden China and India ain't putting nothing in their cleaning that situation up. So all their bad air is still there. But since we don't control the air, our good air decided to float over to China, bad air. <laughs> so when China gets our good air, their bad air got to move. <laughs> so it moves over to our good air space. And now we got to clean that back up. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. That was United States Senate candidate Herschel Walker explaining that America has good air and good water. Don't tell that to the residents of Flint because I think that they take issue with that factually inaccurate statement. But we have good air, good water, some of the best in the world. And on top of that, um, we shouldn't have to worry about climate change because we need oil for everything. So he'll take care of it. I think I'm beginning to wrap my head around what he's saying after watching that video literally like 10 different times. But um, so he says this is a direct quote. Since we don't control the air. Our good air decided to float over to China's bad air. So when China gets our good air, their bad air has got to move. So it moves over to our good air space. Then now we got to clean that back up. So it's not really us. It's China. So we'll put good air into the atmosphere. We'll create the air, pump it into the atmosphere. And then China will just produce bad air. So... His solution is, presumably, we make a deal with China. We strike a deal. We give them 10 air in exchange for uh, five bad air. Or no, no, I have it backwards. We say, China, we're going to give you 25 bad air if you give us 50 good air. But we'll give you money with it. So that way you're taking the bad air, but we're getting majority good air. What the hell did you just say? I'm really struggling here. Um, this is a U.S. Senate candidate that is genuinely unfit to serve. Um, and it's, it's sad. I don't want to go too hard on him because it feels ableist. It feels wrong. There's obviously mental health issues there. But if you really have no knowledge of these policy issues that affects the world, I I'm sorry, you, you just, you can't serve in the U.S. Senate. It it's too important of a job. You, you can't do that. It just... And the worst part is that the audience was applauding, clapping like seals, as he said, the most incoherent shit imaginable. Now, he's doing so poorly that he had to kind of shake up his campaign, hire new people, because Republicans, they have no hope. They don't know what he's doing. The Washington Post reported that the National Republican Senatorial Committee, concerned about Walker's performance as a candidate, encouraged a reset of his campaign operation after a series of controversies, which included a July 7th report by the Daily Beast that Walker lied to his campaign staff about the number of children he has fathered. He's also fumbled some policy explanations on the campaign trail. NRSC Communications Director Chris Hartline declined to comment on discussions with Walker's campaign, but said the campaign makes its own hiring decisions. A Walker campaign spokesman person didn't immediately respond to a message seeking comment. Walker won the May 24th GOP primary in Georgia by more than 50 percentage points after he was endorsed by former President Donald Trump, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, and other prominent national Republicans. But recent polls show a close race in November with Warnock. A Quinnipiac University poll released June 29th showed Warnock with a 10-point lead, but a survey by the progressive group Data for Progress in early June showed Walker with a two-point lead. The Cook Political Report rates the race a toss-up. So, yeah, this very well could be a U.S. senator when he very clearly is demonstrably unfit to serve. I just I feel like with issue after issue, if you don't demonstrate any knowledge or even interest at all, then why are you why do this? Why run? 
this is one of those situations um, where the family, I have to place the blame on them. They need to intervene and have a conversation with him and say, Herschel, you shouldn't be doing this, right? I said this about Trump. I said this about Biden back in 2019 as well. Um, you know, if somebody has demonstrated that they don't necessarily have the mental acuity uh, to serve in a position of power and they could pose a threat to the country because of their demonstrable inability to serve, then we, we have to do something. But I mean, it doesn't really matter. We don't look at qualifications anymore as a country. We just look at what somebody says. And if you can recite at least a couple of talking points, then the base will go along with it. Whoever says the most talking points, it's like fucking political bingo. Oh, well, he said CRT and he called out um, trans people. And also he said that uh, we should have more private. Like if you just, and I'm, I'm not really representing their talking points well enough, but you get the point, right? If you just play the greatest hits, then that's all you have to do. You don't have to demonstrate knowledge. You don't have to prove that you're more qualified or even have an interest in running for Congress because you care about your constituents. You just have to say what they want to hear and they just applaud like NPCs. It's just, it's a sad state of affairs, but this is American politics in 2022 and I don't see it changing anytime soon, unfortunately. And that makes me feel really depressed about the state of the world. But, I mean, if you go back and watch the movie Idiocracy by Mike Judge, I swear to God, like, I'm not being hyperbolic here. There are some politicians in that movie where they're purposefully acting stupid that are more intelligent than elected officials in the United States. Watch the movie if you don't believe me. Like, they were literally watering crops in that movie with Gatorade and wondering why they were starving. But we're reaching a level where that's a parody that's indistinguishable from today's America. And that's really horrifying, but that that's what we're working with. So we have to deal with it and find some way to wake Americans up and get them to stop falling for people like this. But how do you do that when there's so much brainwashing through mainstream media, reactionary news? I don't know. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I built a successful chicken business. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I built a successful chicken business. I don't talk like a politician. 